Hey everybody, really excited. We're gonna do a jump in and landings class today. Thanks for joining us. To get started, we'll do a nice little joint prep warm up. So if you'd like to follow along, we're gonna do some wrist circles. It's been crazy weather. Like every time I look over at the windows, switch directions, it's been either snowing or sunny or death, crazy clouds or so strange. Awesome, drop that down. Stand on one foot balancing, pointing and flexing with the other. We're gonna cover some interesting moving mechanics, but first, big circles with our toe. Getting our bodies warm, switch directions. If you wanna follow along with your finger like me, that's cool. <laughs> Miss y'all. Come join us in chat and say hi. Switch feet, point and flex in. Got a weird thing on this calf. Big circles. Awesome. Switch directions. Cool, we'll get straight into it. So today we're gonna to talk about jumpings and landings, but before we can do that, we're gonna start with warm up, specifically with some isometric contractions. Uh, our landing position is the bread and butter of today, and we're gonna talk about that, but it relates directly to squat. So we're gonna review squat first as a way to warm up our bodies even further. For this to work really well for a warm up, there might be times where I stand up or change or make exaggerated samples to show you what I want or don't want. So try to do your best to hone in, make those holds happen, continue to work and make those adjustments on your own. Don't stand up and rest when I'm doing that because I'm in my brain thinking about how long you're holding that. I will always say, shake it out when I'm ready for you to stop. So that'll just make sure to enable you to get a nice good Work out and move your body. So let's get started. For squat mechanic, we need to understand that we can lock down our body um, in a board and shift weight. So if I'm nice and tall and straight, I can lean forward slightly into my toes. And I can lean back. And once I start to lean back into my heels, uh, at some point I could have a tipping moment. So we can't lean quite as far because obviously we don't have these big old flippers keeping us upright. But as a, an entire unit, I'm able to lean and put weight in my toes without not actually raising your heels up off the ground. And I'm able to lean back on my heels without lifting my toes up off the ground. Um, cool, so starting here with our squat mechanic, we're gonna start wide. If you have wider hips than shoulders, as a human, you might want to have even a wider stance, nothing too crazy, but we also wanna make sure that our feet are fairly parallel to one another. So a little bit of rotation out is fine if that's what feels like your body wants today, but not excessive. So ideally fairly parallel. I'm gonna go right about here. From this position, we're gonna take our hips and we're gonna hip hinge them back. Then we're gonna take our knees and we're gonna bend them and squat down nice and low. A little snap crackle pop in my hips today. But what I wanna make sure that's happening is that I am not supinating that I am not pronating. I just said those opposite, my bad. Pronating <laughs> or supinating. I don't wanna cave in. I wanna keep my knees stacked right over my shoelaces. And I'm reaching my hips back and behind, allowing that hover moment. I have my arms out in front of me. That's to help promote a neutral, neutral back, engaged belly, but also to counterbalance so that I can sink a little lower. What we don't wanna have happen is that you're sinking so low passive that you start to have your hips sag down. You don't want that. So keeping up, I you know, around 90 is fine. Don't go crazy, but you're working and it's awesome. And again, we're thinking about our knees staying back behind us and our hips are focused on reaching out and behind. Like they're trying to push a button on a wall behind. It won't get there. Push that button to save the world someday. Don't we all need that? But while I'm holding my squat, I want to also make sure that as I'm reaching back, I'm not putting weight in my toes. I want to be having that weight in my heel. I can wiggle my toes nice and light, but I'm not thinking about lifting them actively as I reach down, get that good hold. Okay, relax, shake it out. Good work, you're amazing. You're awesome. We're gonna go back to that squat hold. <laughs> For our squat, it's important that as we lean and put that weight in the back of our heel, that we're understanding why. What we don't wanna have happen is that we're shoving our knees forward as we squat and that our knees are hovering over into oblivion. The reason for this, so everyone's gonna join me for a nice good squat hold and we'll talk more about that. So from this direction and angle, start nice and tall. You gotta take more breaths, y'all. I'll work on that. Um, nice and tall, we're gonna hip hinge back. We're gonna bend at our knees and drop down. So from here, 
I want to think about my knees reaching back down. If I draw a line straight down through, my feet and my structure is helping to support me. If I draw a straight line down through my glutes, nothing is supporting me. I can check in with this on my own body. The more that I shove my knees forward, if I look down, I actually can't see forward. my shoelaces. That's not good. I wanna try and avoid that as best as possible because these are the largest muscles in our body and we are okay with them hovering out nowhere like a suspension bridge <laughs> and that's wonderful. We have really nice, important tendons and ligaments in our knees. Take a break, stand up, shake it out. <laughs> if you were working, you're amazing, good job. Um, but these tendons and ligaments in our knees are really important and we don't wanna put excess strain and pressure into them. So if we're shoving our knees forward and I draw that line straight down, there's nothing supporting. All of that pressure is going straight into my knees and into my tendons and my ligaments. That's no good, we don't want that. So. Going back to our squat, we're gonna now take our stance. If it was wider, or if it was a little less wide, whatever, we're gonna take it and make it more narrow. We're still gonna do squat, but I want approximately hip width. Now, for me, my hips are the widest part of my body, so I'm gonna at, be pretty much at hip width, not more narrow. Um, if your hips are not the widest part of your body, you might be okay to have your stance even a little closer. What we don't want is feet touching. We don't want to rely on our skeleton to keep us upright. We want to use our muscles. So parallel feet, more narrow stance. The pro tip here is that if you were going to start jump roping, I said jump rope right now. That's the stance that you want. So if you are a little wide and you're like, okay, let's jump rope. And you pull your feet together. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> cool. So starting back with this, this uh, narrower stance squat. We're gonna be nice and straight as a board. We're gonna have our hip hinge go back. We're gonna bend our knees. You're not gonna go as low. That's okay. You have a narrower stance. You're gonna have less range of motion. But what I really want you to think about is sending those knees behind you, keeping your chest upright, trying to get a little bit low with your hips, but it won't be as low as before. And you're just gonna feel that hold. You're gonna check in. You're gonna make sure that you're not caving in and pronating, that you're not trying to be all ballerina and supinating, but everything's nice and stacked in parallel. Awesome. We're breathing. Woohoo! How are you? We've got Rooster Bad Guy in stream. We've hi. got... Hi. Hi, Joel. We've got Bush Wookie. Hi, Paul. Are you working? This is hard. Oh my goodness. Breathing. Amazing. Stand up, shake it out. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So, from there, Back to that board from before. I am a straight and narrow board. I lean forward and put weight in my toes. Don't bend. I'm not being straight up, leaning my chest forward in order to go forward. Taking everything straight forward into that lean. We talked about how we could do that backwards as well. From this narrower squat stance, we're now gonna find and learn about our landing mechanic, landing position stance. So it's, it is our squat that is more narrow. You push, freeze. Yeah, just kind of lean a bit forward, freeze. Should be amazing and perfect. So let's work on that together. I'm gonna start sideways because I think it's easier to see. And then I'll face back the other way as well. So back in our narrow stance squat, we're aboard. We're gonna hip hinge back. We're gonna bend our knees, squat down. Our weight is in our heels. I can wiggle my toes. If I take this and I lock every joint down, all I do is put that pressure into my toes not so much that I lean forward, lift my heels and fall. We don't want that. But instead, just enough, send that pressure into the forefront of my foot, ball of my foot into my toes, and that's perfect. I'm gonna turn towards you. So just a wee bit. What we don't want is a complete elevation of our heel. So we're not trying to lift our heels. We're just putting our weight forward. Really important. If you are feeling a lot of burning sensation in the fronts of your legs, this might mean that you're pushing your knees too far forward. This should be really glute dominant still, not super quad dominant. Now, depending on where we have weaknesses and strengths, that could be different for everybody and that's okay. Stand up, shake it out if you've not had a break yet. <laughs> cool. But going back down, what I don't want to have happen, if you'd like to join me again, feel free. To pinch back, squat down. If I set, send that weight forward, I don't want to do that 
by shoving my knees forward and starting to get upright. This is a really typical choice that people make, or maybe not choice, but a pattern that people end up doing. So what we really want to think of, of my knees is that line test. Your knees shouldn't be too much past your toes. You should be able to see the complete bit of your front of your shoe. Back is nice and straight. Feeling those glutes squeeze, not feeling primary predominant burning sensation in the fronts of your calves. Calves, quads. There you go. You're gonna stand up and you're gonna shake it out. Cool. So from there, that landing, landing position, we need to get there right away. We need to have such an understanding of that blueprint that we can just get it right whenever we want. So what we're gonna do first is static with these isometric holds. So we're gonna just stand up straight and tall. And we're gonna practice dropping down into those any position holds. Hold for a few seconds, whatever feels right. If you need to attend and make corrections in your own body, if I didn't say stop and shake it out, stop and shake it out. <laughs> Good job, Joel, if you are still doing that to spite me. <laughs> um, anywho, I want you to drop down. We're gonna do three practices. And so you move your body how you need uh, to find that perfect home base of that landing position. Hold it for a bit until it feels right. Stop, shake it out. Do three on your own. I'm gonna do them as well and talk again about the points that I'm thinking of. So I'm gonna stand up nice and straight and tall and I'm gonna try and just drop down into that landing position. I could maybe slip a piece of paper underneath my heel. It's that light on the ground, but it wouldn't get very far because it's still parallel to the ground. I'm thinking of that nice hold. I'm standing up and I'm shaking it out when I'm ready. I'm just standing up nice, straight and tall for my next attempt and I'm thinking about dropping down and I'm checking in. I'm making sure that my knees aren't caving, that I'm not caving into my ankles. That's a common one. And that my feet are fairly parallel. That's important as well. Awesome. Out. And up and shaking it. Doing it again. Feeling all normal. And then shoo pow. Dropping into landing position. Feeling my toes grab into the ground. Thinking about keeping my my back nice and flat, chest is upright, I'm not bowed down. That's amazing and we can shake it out. Cool. We can make this a little bit more challenging by adding more balance and into it with the clear understanding that eventually, if I can balance really well and hold this position and find it right away, I can eventually jump to and from it, which is what we want so that someday I can leap and bound through these cool objects again when we're all back and that'll be neat. All I need is something that can elevate my feet just a wee bit. So some a book that won't slip and slide, you're not gonna be jumping to it, um, but that you don't mind putting pressure on. This is only to illustrate that my heel is not touching the floor, but I am not elevating it. Eventually, as we jump to and from the ledges that are truly elevated, we gotta make sure that we are not artificially elevating our heel in order to protect it, and that we're also not dropping through our heel. This is my heel, by the way. <laughs> that we're not dropping through our heel and bouncing through those tendons and ligaments, that's not good. So I'm gonna take the ball of my foot, and I'm just gonna have the rest arch all the way through. Does that look, everybody can see? Yeah, I think so, cool. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna just find that falling, tall, tall standing position. And I'm gonna do another set of, I'm gonna only do one. And then I'm gonna actually grab another item that elevates further so you can see it really well and have this balance come into play. So from here I am, I'm dropping down and finding that landing position. My heel is hovering. If I were to bend through my ankle and dorsiflex, I would hit that ground. Then I don't wanna elevate high heels, Michael Jackson, none of that yet. Listen to him later. Now, it's just gonna activate a few more things. It's gonna really check in to make sure that you are using all of these little corrective muscles to create that balance. And when you feel really good about that, you can stand up, shake it out. Otherwise, you can continue on this object, balancing as you are throughout the next little set. If you'd like to find something to elevate even further, that's an option. Or to even make this a more um, intense balance challenge. So that, I'm gonna start here. So this is a flat object, but my toes can curl over, which is nice. If you have a ledge and your toes can't curl over, that's cool too. But I can just find this standing position here, 
I can drop down and this balance element changes. Because it's not flat ground, it's a little bit more narrow, perhaps the mental component of being a couple of inches off the ground, that could all play as a factor. And I'm finding that landing position, holding, thinking about engaging my core, thinking about reaching my hips back, knees back, chest up. Awesome. And we can make that even more challenging by taking a bar, a broomstick handle, not a roller that will roll away from you. <laughs> but um, something like this, I wanna make sure once the object that we are balancing or interacting with gets smaller and smaller, less surface area, it's going to not only increase the balance challenge, but eventually, like I said, I wanna be able to jump to and from this, this object. In order to do that, I need to be really precise. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I need to make sure that I'm making the correct point of contact. If we are a human that's used to wearing, um, you know, thick, foamy running shoes, we probably don't have a lot of foot awareness because a running shoe is built and, and designed to have extra room in the toe so that as you're like stomping that pavement, you've got somewhere to put your feet. Cool, that's not great for us here in parkour. We don't want that, we want a shoe that fits fairly well to our foot. And what we wanna make sure is that we're actually putting our ball of foot on the bar or on the object that we're balancing on, that we're not going too close to our arch or surely not on our arch. And we also don't wanna to go too close to the fronts of our toes. You as the human get to decide exactly where on your ball of foot you are, whether or not it's directly on top, slightly in front, slightly in back, that's all up to you. But what we wanna try and do is find that landing position. And as this balance challenge starts to get a little bit more intense, we really might have a lot of like knee shoving happening. Ooh, might have some straight leg windmills Ooh, or some matrix. <laughs> but whatever you end up doing, I really want you to try to find and regain that home base. When we're newer at this, we might find that home base for half a second and then have to leave it again. We might be moving and dancing and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But eventually, I want you to get to the point where you can calm, embrace, and check in that your heels are not super elevated. My heels should be acting as if they are on a flat surface. They just happen to be hovering, and I'm really grabbing this bar with my toes. You can see my body shaking, it's working. But holding that isometric is gonna really build in that muscle memory and help us understand that landing position better so that we can jump to it. And for that, we're gonna switch to Charles. Ooh. <laughs> we were gonna have things all cool today and we were gonna be able to do, whoa. <laughs> okay. I, I think the, the, the fun thing about parkour people is we, we can finish doing a lot of cool, fun stuff and then instantly just go trip <laughs> on the floor. I do that a lot. <laughs> I trip on nothing. Yeah. Um, so, as I was saying, we were going to be having some fun today. We, we had a second camera set up over this way for a lot more space and bigger jumps, and it was all working a half hour ago, and then it broke. We're not entirely sure why it broke, but we couldn't fix it in time, and we wanted to be able to stream for you all and get everything ready to go and be here on time. So here we are, and I'm going to do my best, and you can follow along if you so choose. So we just warmed up our lower body. Well, I didn't warm up my lower body. You all lower, warmed up your lower body. Um, but what we're thinking about with that landing posture, landing position, we're trying to figure out how can we dynamically lower our body into that position while maintaining control. And that's going to be one of the biggest things that we want to talk about. The control is everything for us. And sometimes because we can't necessarily define or know entirely where our center of gravity is going to be in relation to where our feet land, it's something that we just have to practice and ingrain into our muscular control of understanding where are we going to be on landing. We have to guess where we're going to be how quickly we're going to interact with the floor and then be ready to absorb into it. So if we find a space just anywhere, we find a good uh, position underneath us, if we just start bouncing, this already, I forgot to put my phone in my uh, zippered pocket, so maybe I can do this on stream. I'm gonna move my phone <laughs> over to this pocket. And we're just bouncing, we're doing our thing. These are little miniature landings. 
What we're not doing when we do this is dropping. If you live uh, above somebody, you're not trying to make as loud of a noise as possible. You don't want to ruin their enjoyment of life right now and possibly be a bad neighbor. Instead, we are absorbing into it, almost like we're trying to jump rope. We're on our toes and our ankles are compressing a little bit. We're loading and absorbing and then dynamically pressing up. What are you looking at? I just want you to turn. Oh, you so want I me to turn? See. Okay, so I'm turning this way. Yay. That's what my sign language is. And my heels are not touching the floor. I'm just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And at a certain point in time, we might decide to drop ourselves into our landing position. And what we want to have happen is for our body to drop naturally into that shape and stop. We want to be able to control ourselves here. If you already are feeling wobbly in getting your body into that drop landing position, you can promise yourself that when you jump to something and have it be something that you have to balance on, if it's the edge of something as we were doing earlier with Nicole, you're going to have way less control. We want to establish this on the floor first then as we get better and better and better, as our habits get better and better, we move on up to harder and harder implements. We start bouncing again. <laughs> Rooster says, don't tell me how much I don't want to make a lot of noise for my downstairs neighbor. BC likes using the house. I guess I suppose if you want to be a jerk, then fine. Go for it. And I'm going to drop. And again, we are trying to absorb and make as quiet of a noise as possible. And we also want to have that wonderful fluid drop into that shape and have it stop. What we don't want to have happen is for our entire body to continue dropping all the way down. We'd call this a bottom out where our hips bounce all the way out. Or if we drop and then have to immediately stand up in order to catch our balance. These are two things that we try to avoid because they demonstrate a lack of control and that's no good. Bouncing, I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean in just a moment. I'm gonna drop and then I have to oh, stand up to try to regain my balance. It's not something that we like to see. We want to be able to absorb into it, pause, get that control and stand up when we want to stand up. You're, Let's do that one more time. You're an eagle landing on a branch with awesome grace. You're not the crow hitting the glass. <laughs> we can That's go my ahead metaphor. And that up. Now, if we were to just do this without the bounce, without that, that sort of tactile feedback constantly, and then drop in, all we're doing is just vertically jumping and thinking about that landing. And again, we're trying to figure out what is it going to feel like as we make that contact. We wanna think about reaching out through everything to absorb in. Because we are working with gravity, this is an eccentric contraction. We are loading those muscles as they stretch and lengthen. What we're really thinking about are those glutes, that lower back, the hamstrings are super involved on this because every time, as Nicole said, that we shove those knees forward, we start putting more and more stress on the front part of our knees. We don't like that. We want to use those hamstrings to pull that weight back away from the front part of our knee and sort of disperse all of that load through the entirety of that knee. So if I'm here, I'm just going to think about standing still. I'm going to be doing a nice good jump. You don't need to jump super high if you don't want to. We got, a, trying to we go got an alert. We got an alert. It was ten dollars from a human that oh my I goodness. couldn't tell yet. I think. Hold on. How do I figure that out? <laughs> Rooster <laughs> says I'm smack talking crows. Oh, and and I'm apparently a beautiful poet. Thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> You're except, a beautiful poet. Except that where do I go see the? Thank you to the human. Oh, BC likes you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss you too. <laughs> the end. <laughs> thank you so much. Woo. <laughs> And again, when my we do too. this, we are attempting to do a couple different things. Where we are right now, it is very likely that in making that contact, you might be able to have a tactile sensation from your toes travel all the way up, have you comprehend and understand that you've made contact, and then absorb in. As our jumps have more momentum behind them, as we have more acceleration toward the thing that we are jumping and landing to, that no longer is the case, which is to say, 
there's a very real delay that happens from the sensation on your toes and it has to travel all the way up here and then have to travel all the way back down to the actual musculature that's going to absorb. What I want you to think about when we were doing our balance class later, or not a uh, couple, couple days ago, we were talking about how we can balance with our toes and not rely on our eyesight. It's the same sort of idea of the delay that we don't want to have happen. We want to have everything go and locally right down through that lower body. We need to be good at guessing. I want you to try to figure out whether or not you can start to absorb into this landing posture before you actually feel the contact being made. I'm just thinking about stopping right away, lowering myself in, I get myself set and drop in and it should be nice and light. We want that good light contact. We don't wanna make big stomps. We also don't wanna have this happen where you drop in and we go, oh, and we lose out on that balance. We want to figure out how we can establish that control each and every time. And then as we get better with that, I'm gonna bring our little hazard strip back. I'm gonna put that right there. As we get better with that, we're talking about figuring out how we can add horizontal distance to this. Instead of just thinking about going up and down, we're gonna start moving forward just a smidge. We're gonna start from about a foot behind. And again, we're gonna use this as a wonderful opportunity to practice a good solid habit of figuring out how can we aim for that front edge of that object. How can we make sure that we're aiming with the forefoot and not jamming our arch into that corner, especially as that object gets taller and taller off of the floor or if there's a gap or anything else like that, we want to make sure that we are interacting with our forefoot. So I'm gonna start from a foot away. And I'm just gonna add, again, it doesn't need to be super big. I don't need to expressively jump as high as I possibly can. It's just a nice little drop into it. I get myself in that landing posture, I take a step back. I get myself in that landing posture and I take myself back. And again, if this is only like, I have not even a half an inch off the floor. And already it can sometimes be quite a challenge just to do these little dinky jumps. But again, as we do this, we're <laughs> Kelsey, thinking- Kelsey, right. <laughs> what's that? There's a, there's some, I, I'm, I got in trouble for bad mouthing birds with Rooster. And then Kelsey says, trust the guy named Rooster to be angry with bird jokes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And what we're trying to do, because this is only a half inch off the ground, it's a nice sort of, uh, drill that you can practice here to make sure that you are not feeling your heels interact with the floor while also being cognizant and understanding that we don't want to land with our heels super up high. Here is no good because we remove the opportunity of our ankle to do and act as a buffer. As I said before, there's, there's going to be a very real delay between your toes making contact with that object and you comprehending and understanding it and whether or not if in that moment you are able to compress into your landing position if you don't time that appropriately with all the impact that your body is taking in you've done nothing useful your landing position does nothing if i were to completely over exaggerate this if i were to jump and then lower it in <laughs> ah, that's no good I waited too long, the impact already happened, and then I lowered myself in. Now, obviously this is very, you know, microscopic. This is happening under such small instances that it's gonna be really challenging to understand whether or not you've done that correctly. But what we want to use our ankles as is that opportunity to add a little bit of delay in there where our feet are making contact, but our ankles are... As you are brain is comprehending all these neurological signals coming into it, all the stimulus saying, hey, sensation, we need to absorb. It gives you that added little buffer for you to have that opportunity to absorb with all the rest of that large musculature of your hips and around your knees to absorb at the right time. Maybe you wanna step a little bit back, that'd be kinda cool. And as we start getting farther and farther away, what I want you to think about 
is not jumping and then having your entire body kind of float this way and then land into your landing position. You are an active participant in this. You can think about taking your feet and reaching them to the spot on the object that you want them to land on. We're not just jumping in hoping that we get there because we might miss. In this case, I made it. But again, we don't want to just think about jumps. We like calling these precision landings or just precisions. The, pre the idea of a precision involves a jump, but also a landing. If you just call it a precision jump, then you're just jumping. And then what? You have to land, you're now airborne. We want this to be that whole unity of the motion of us jumping and actually landing in on it. You are an active participant in this. Reach your toes for the spot on the object that you want them to land, and then think about pulling yourself into your landing position. Hi, I'm, Yance. I'm not thinking about pushing myself away from that object. I'm thinking about pulling myself into my landing posture. We can do this a couple more times. As you see, I've moved back to about three feet. And each time I'm making sure I'm landing nice and soft. If under one circumstance, you start to notice that things change. If you started to jump from maybe like four feet away and you start noticing, wow, my precision is way less precise. And I'm now landing some of them past my mark. I'm landing some of them too soon on my mark. Or if you're starting to notice that you're landing a little bit heavier, that might be an opportunity for you to say, hey, I'm starting to get outside of my ability to perform. And I might continue jumping from just a little bit closer get that success rate up just enough so that you're challenging yourself. Uh, there's, a, there's a cool little rule called the 80-20 rule. This is true not only in teaching, it exists in a lot of different industries, but for us, we're talking about learning and challenging. We wanna make sure that we are challenging ourselves in such a way that we are succeeding eight out of 10 tries and failing two out of 10 tries. What that's helping us understand to do is that we are in this nice little sweet spot where we are appropriately challenging ourselves. We are trying something and we only succeed one out of 10 times. That is way too challenging. You're probably not necessarily learning that much. And for those other nine times, you might actually be establishing poor habits. If you're succeeding 10 out of 10 times, you're doing nothing. You're just kind of, well, you're doing something. You're boosting your ego which also like they have a point or may have a place, but it's not necessarily doing anything to help you progress. You need to continue to challenge that, that whatever that, that skill happens to be. And because I've moved this up, I would, again, that thing was maybe a half inch off the floor. This thing is three inches off the floor. It's also thinner. I'm going to start much closer. Again, I'm gonna do these little teeny, teeny tiny jumps. Just thinking about getting myself pulling myself into that landing position. I'm feeling out the object. Paul says that pulling into is a really helpful visualization. I feel, I think it's so interesting where because we call these landings and because we are technically trying to resist that drop, people think of it as a push. In this case, it is not a push, it is a pull. And I say that hoping that it doesn't come out the same as one of my favorite stories of uh, a little known, a little known guy <laughs> named, uh, oh man, I'm moving. And now I've forgotten Steven Seagal. Yes, Steven Seagal. If you've never seen Steven Seagal <laughs> Lawman, it's amazing. If you thought, if you thought uh, Tiger King was hilarious, you gotta go watch some Steven Seagal Lawman. There's a moment where Steven Seagal is like, teaching one of the officers how to shoot a pistol. And like, why is he qualified to do this? I don't really know. But regardless, they're out and he's, he's teaching this guy his Zen tricks of, of how to shoot a pistol. And he's like, most people think that you just pull a trigger, but I don't want you to pull the trigger. I want you to push the bullet out of the gun. And the guy was like, wow, that's amazing. And it's kind of stupid, right? So I hope that 
pulling yourself into your landing position is not stupid in the same in the same sense and that it's actually helpful i feel like getting charlie caught up on chat right now would be so challenging y'all are just like rapid fire oh my goodness that mean that they're not moving i think so there's a lot of boosting your ego is nonsense but confidence is fine and man to say gall have an ego <laughs> that was a bad summary don't judge me it has its place but again, because I changed this, this object to something that requires a little bit more focus, a little bit more control, and I get that I can do this on bars and balance and, and have that control. Because I don't always understand exactly where my center of gravity is going to be, there is an element of balance here. And what we're trying to avoid is having too many instances where we are landing and having to go, whoa, in order to reestablish control. That's what we don't want to do. If we are here, we are creating a scenario, we are training, we are drilling, we are focusing to improve our mechanics. We're not just jumping to complete the jump. We are jumping to learn how to jump better and how to continue to land better. We need to establish good habits and then from there, we can go off and do a lot of fun challenges and everything else like that. But if you're starting to get to a point where you're jumping from too far away or for whatever reason, you're jumping to something that makes you go, whoa, take it back, go up a progression, make it slightly easier, reaffirm those good habits, and then challenge them later. We'll do a couple more. Whoa, I missed. I might have been distracted with chat. Did you explain that if they don't have a two by four trainer that they can do this ledger stair? They can totally, oh, I thought you talked about that. I'm oh, so I sorry. I don't know if I did. So, hey y'all, if you're at home and you're wanting to get past the ground progression, just make sure that whatever you're jumping to is very secure. So even an object on a yoga mat might not be secure because as we are novice jumpers and landers, we tend to jump at objects. Did you talk about that yet? No. Talk about that. Not yet. Okay. Um, and so anyway, what he's about to say, jumping at objects is at risk of the object slipping out and you falling backward and hitting, hitting your head on the floor and that would be no good. So making sure that whatever you're jumping to is very secure to jump to. So far, so far we've, we've been jumping from pretty close distances and that's just to help us continue to reaffirm those good solid mechanics, those good habits and everything else. As we start getting farther and farther away, we have to understand that we are not jumping at stuff, as Nicole said. What we are attempting to figure out is how we can put our body in the correct shape so that we are using our musculature in, in the way that it is well designed to do, yes. So Kelsey's saying that the part about backing up and reaffirming good habits is super helpful. And um, Paul's saying like, yeah, I know, I'm terrible at jumping at things instead of the up to come down. It's true. So when we think about the structure and the function of our lower body, we are really good at resisting the pull of gravity. And when we're standing upright, we can just kind of sit on our skeletal structure and, and be fine. We're not really expelling that much energy here. The second we drop down into a squat, everything is resisting and pressing downward vertically. We are so well designed for that. However, if you have your shoulders directly over your feet, you have momentum horizontally carrying you forward, but your feet stop. What you've created is a situation where your feet, because of friction, will stay put, but the rest of your body moves forward. What we want to avoid is having any of that happen. We want to put ourselves in a situation where we are constantly getting ourselves angled the right way that we are dropping and using that lower body musculature into the floor. That, that understanding changes as we get farther and farther away from an object. If we are here close, it makes easy sense for us to say like, oh, I'm just jumping up and then I'm landing down on the object. It's very similar to a vertical jump. As they start taking a couple steps back, that angle starts to get a little bit more shallow. Okay, but I'm still landing down on top of it. I start jumping from a little bit farther back. Go, okay, now the angle is a little bit more shallow again. Maybe I have to try harder in order to get myself up on top of it. However, at a certain point in time, you start jumping from so far away. And in this situation, I'm gonna show you why it might change in, in a moment. 
here, the angle of attack is so shallow that I sort of have no choice to land directly down on top of the object because my angle of attack is gonna be somewhere here. And because I'm gonna be somewhere here and I can't necessarily just go this way and point through my toe and then end up landing into it and absorbing in, it's too shallow that way. At a certain point in time, if you start jumping from so far on the same platform, on the same level, you do a heel strike first. And I know that we just kind of got through and said, wait a minute, we don't want our heels to touch the floor. In this specific, specific circumstance, if you are doing max distance broad jumps, you sort of have no choice. But that doesn't mean that you are continuing to jam your heel into the floor and make these nice big stomps. You can still absorb into it the same exact way and rock yourself into it. You're getting yourself out. And I can still land softly. And maybe Nicole's the only one that can attest to this because the mic is so far away from my legs. It's but soft. It's, <laughs> right, and so that's something that you can also practice. But it really only comes into play when you add a lot of distance so that you have no choice but to have that shallow angle or attack. height. As the object changes. Uh, Joel says a few weeks without training these definitely shows. <laughs> what? Joel says that a few weeks not training these jumps and landings definitely shows. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we feel for you. As we know. the object elevates itself off the floor, that angle of attack and, and heel, uh, heel first landing no longer becomes a thing. We're not landing on the same surface. That surface is raised up. And now there's a little bit more room where we are actually able to make contact with the forefoot with our heel making contact on the floor. And that's, that's where everything changes. This has now gone back to our normal precision. And as we get farther and farther away, there's one new thing that we want to add in. We always want to ensure that we maintain control. If you're getting your body airborne, you have now accepted and just given a little bit of control away. Anything can happen while you are in the air. The thing that you're jumping to could like, move away. You go, whoa, how did the railing disappear? I don't know, maybe the matrix just had a like decoding error Ugh, and now it's no longer there. You go, oh, oh, shucks. Maybe something that you're jumping to has now changed or moved or something caught your attention and now, I don't know, anything else. You've given up a little bit of control. You're airborne. You are no longer directly uh, supported by another strong surface. So, with that in mind, if we are jumping in the air and we're out this way, we're going, oh, I'm, I know for a fact that I'm not going to get myself on top of this object. I definitely did not jump enough. Now we have to talk about how do we avoid the panic? Most of you have done this before. We practice something when we talk about wall passes or when we're talking about uh, tacks or jumps or anything else like that, we've done touchbacks and we've done rebounds. Rebounds are what we want to train here. And we can do this either with our object. If you've got a stair, you can do it on the stair. If you have a sturdy flat wall, you can do it on a sturdy flat wall. We start ourselves off just with one single leg doing touchbacks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show on the wall and the side and it shouldn't be weird. Totally. All of y'all tell us if I'm too close to him and our mics freak out. I'm gonna use my back leg just like a touchback and I'm going to interact with that object but I'm gonna push myself back. It's working the same exact way as our wall pass, wall pass touchbacks. I'm elevated off the floor with that lower limb, and I'm just interacting and pushing back away from it. I'm gonna switch sides. I wanna be able to do this both legs. I'm just interacting and then pushing back. And again, my ball of the foot is making contact as I push straight back. And I just like to know that I have the precision to get my foot there. I can take it and say, hey, I've got that foot eye coordination that I can interact. As that gets better and better and better, we can start adding rebounds into the equation. Rebounds on flat walls are actually significantly more challenging than what we're doing here. We're only jumping just a little bit and I also don't have that giant wall keeping my head from hitting something. But we want to make sure that we are interacting with the forefoot and pushing straight backward, landing on two feet. I get myself set again. And maybe I start from a little bit farther away. We are not jumping, oh, that was a bad example. We're not jumping, landing, and then jumping backward. 
These are actual bounces. These are bounces. This is the same sort of touch sensation that we're gonna get on that object where we touch it and then have to bounce back. You get We're working on a wall. Next step would be up, up, and down. Far. Okay. <laughs> yes. We're not gonna do rebounds on flat walls because that's actually pretty challenging. I can encourage and that right so now. so as we set ourselves back, we're going back to our drills, we're doing our jumps, we start getting more and more opportunities of success, we start changing the angle of attack, we're starting a little bit farther away. Now there might be a situation where we jump and we go, oh no, and we have no choice but to do that little bounce back. We want to have that wonderful control because that moment of compression and then following through with that extension to do that bounce back, that is something that can be really strenuous on your calves and you need to condition them properly for that one moment where we have that high momentum, boom, velocity into that object. We wanna pause, bounce, land down on those feet. What are you confused of? Joel says, setup is not at your own risk. Real quick to the top. I, I'm, is, is his beanbag chair doing the precisions? Is he jumping into, oh, that's to protect you from the wall. Oh, don't hit the wall, <laughs> I think. Oh, goodness. Goofy. <laughs> okay, that was silly. All right, going back. I have access to a bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and move myself up to a bar. I'm gonna change the challenge level a little bit. And as we change the object, as we require a little bit more control for that balance, I want to reestablish what it feels like to interact with a bar with that rounded object rather than that flat object. It does change things a little bit. And what I wanna think about is getting myself in that same sort of landing position that we were talking about before and understanding that when we get ourselves in that landing position, what we don't wanna have happen is for this to happen. In order for us to stay here, we don't want this. This is also just really challenging to balance this way. We are lowering those heels because the level that we are landing on, that we are supporting ourselves with, is not that full length and depth of our foot. Your heel can totally be in the same level as your forefoot, if not slightly lower. And the cool thing about going slightly lower is that it forces your hips to lean back you kind of have no choice at this point to lean forward and to put yourself in that wonderful drop landing posture. As you start elevating your heels, you might notice Knees go the forward. balance gets harder. And mostly what people do is this. They start to elevate the level of their trunk. Their knees start to shove forward. When I do Lift. that, I feel so much extra pressure right around here. We don't need Just that say extra no, pressure. no pressure. Just say no to pressure. <laughs> Under pressure. Of lots of kinds. So as I start doing those jumps, again, we call these little micro precisions. I'm doing really teeny tiny jumps. I'm only about eight inches away from that object. And I'm thinking about reaching my feet to it. And I want to be able to lower myself into that balance drop landing position. And I want to establish control before I have no choice but to step up and I take a step back. Again, we do this a couple times. I'm thinking about, whoa, I'm thinking about pulling my body into that drop landing position. We are trying to avoid large motions that require tons of balance. Anything that does this, this is no good. Yeah, this when... is you telling yourself, I don't have control here. Why am I jumping to it, right? So we want for to. This, if, the, if the goal is to do precision work, precise mechanical excellence, it would be better to actually just bail, step off, and not give up and collapse, but instead of trying to catch it with balance, like Charlie just said just then, he shoved his knees forward and kind of stood up a little bit. Show like, oops, I don't have it, and then step off front, forward or backward. Oh, nope. Try again. So because, oh, he's, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's asking. <laughs> so if, you are at it and a little bit too far behind yourself, you're going to need to step off backwards. So if I'm jumping, 
Oh, I didn't quite make it. Ooh, that was really loud. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that is better than trying to catch the balance. So if I'm on top, but maybe a little bit too far forward where I would want to think about shoving my knees and trying to catch with balance, instead, oh, that was, I was a little too up, up top. Forward, forward, ready? It's hard to do things incorrectly. Oh, it's really hard to do things incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready and... They say so humbly, oh, so like a step off instead of catching with balance. Gotcha. I think that that, I'm gonna do one more just in case. And to step off instead of try, oop, instead of try and catch and do the wiggle dance. Again. <laughs> oh yeah. Again, as we start to jump from farther and farther away, first off, you're jumping, you know, if you haven't really tested out your surfaces for friction for those deep, deep angles of attack, you probably test that out first. If you've got this directly down on hardwood floor, just see yeah, what the friction level is Rubber to like. hardwood floor will be less friction than rubber to rubber, so Correct. keep that in mind. But putting yoga mats underneath and, and having that connection might be a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. But those bounce backs... <laughs> Joel says, it's so hard to do things incorrectly. Oh, we're just so good. We're just so amazing. <laughs> I know, I heard your voice saying that as I said it. I know, I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But again, as we jump from farther and farther away, we, we've created that new scenario where we have no choice but to, one, guess at when we're gonna make contact. We have to already be absorbing our body into that landing shape as we make contact. We have to be ready for the idea that we might not be able to get ourselves directly on top of that and able to rock ourselves up. We might have to bounce back and we're trying to absorb nice and soft into it and then establish that control. After all of that is made, that was one. That was awesome. You did I, great. I, I was, you I was didn't there catch and I was like, balance. oh no, I, sh I could shove my knees forward <laughs> to catch it, but I did it. He did amazing. He did it awesomely as a bail. Nice. Because it's one thing to practice balance. You should practice balance. There's nothing wrong with balancing on the rail in order to, quote, stick it. I'm just shoving in here. That's fine. Um, but when we're looking to practice precise mechanics, we don't want to opt into balance. They are two separate things that you train so that they are both at your disposal for when Trevor is in the gym <laughs> doing gigantic jumps to this bar over here. He has both of them at his disposal. But I also wanna say another way to make this more challenging is to actually set up something to be balanced on from the start. So elevating and having that landing position so that we can understand, oops, and then I caught this as another option to make it more challenging. Sometimes even just switching up the implement that you're jumping to. Changes everything. That's really close. We Floor is lava forever. Bounce back. Joel says, yes, thank you. Exactly that voice. <laughs> totally how Joel sounds. <laughs> Hopefully Kelsey means that we have confidence instead of ego. I'm gonna hope. <sighs> I've got such a big ego. <laughs> Think for yourself. Oh no. But as Charlie's demonstrating, this back and forth is a way to get some good balance work in if you happen to have those two objects. So he could upgrade the trainer on the right to be a bar as well. And we're gonna, on the next balance class, focus on these sorts of numbers. Might even include some in the strength circuit for Sunday, we'll see. <laughs> of course, you always mean the nicest possible interpretation. I know it, Kelsey. And so going back to that jumping at it versus on top and being able to absorb, at some point, as Charlie was mentioning, those really, really far great distance jumps where you're actually kind of rocking in on your heel, those are, I don't want to say that they're easier, but they are requiring less I don't want to say skill either. They're requiring less precision. And so because they are, it's, it's very, it's very um, 
I'm trying to use my words properly. It is more likely that your body says, oh, 100% effort. Yeah, I got that. I know 100% effort. Ready, set, go. And it can just do 100% effort. And that's great. If I say, okay, well, you need to do 57% effort, your body's not gonna know how to do that right away. And it's gonna take time to kind of tune and then figure that out. So if you have a max broad jump of let's say 10 feet, that is going to be probably a little tricky for you to do a jump that's about five feet-ish. Your body's gonna need to be more precise and rein, rein in the power, but give enough power and things get a little crazy. I um, just set up five t standard Charlie feet. Five standard Charlie feet. That's where he's at right now, y'all. <laughs> so I've created a situation, a little drill, where I started, I started at three, and I want to be able to go over, back, over, back, having pretty, pretty good, solid control in order for me to feel comfortable adding another standard Charlie feet, uh, foot. The really important metric in the gym, y'all. Standard Charlie feet. Yes, C S C F. I can't. I can't spell. Yen says uh, guys need ego, or they could not approach girls, and says that you no longer need ego. Because <laughs> you, you got I, a Nicole. I got my. I got a Nicole. <laughs> True that. <laughs> oh. But then no same thing that really short jumps. So if somebody is confident, going back to this confidence talk feeling like, oh yeah, I can do a four foot jump, that's fine. Don't, it doesn't even like make me worried about that. To make you practice one standard Charlie foot away from your bar edge, that is really challenging. It requires a lot of precision. You're having to calculate and you can't even really spot the bar. Did we talk about spotting? Uh, not necessarily. Okay, so just a food for thought. You can't watch the bar the entire time. So there is a moment um, just like if you're running, or actually I like to use driving a car as a, as a scenario. When you're 16 years old and you're learning to drive a car, you're like looking two to three car lengths out at most on the highway because you're freaked out and you're a novice and it makes your corrections really wonkily. That's a very technical term, wonkily. And so when you get better at driving, you realize that you look farther away and that you can take in more information. That's sort of happening with a jump. So when he, Charlie's prepping, He's looking at the bar, he's understanding, his brain's calculating, and with like, um, what am I trying to say? With, uh, not movement, with mo muscle memory, that's what I want. With muscle memory, his body knows that calculation and produces this jump. And once he's left the ground, he's no longer spotting the bar. His gaze is going to switch to, and this is, you know, my guess, probably two to three feet in front of him, and his eyes will gaze Two to three feet out on the ground. It wouldn't make sense to look up and have to raise his chin or even his eyeballs. That's too far. Just like we talked about with our last balance class, that redirection of gaze can actually make things more challenging. So he's not doing that, but he's not trying to view the bar the entire time. He'd end up looking down, which would pull his chin down, and it would be a new thing to counterbalance and to take into play. Joel says it's a good analogy. Oh no, it's, he's saying his analogy is good. Hold on. <laughs> it's a lot easier to pour all your flour into a mixer than it is to carefully measure it out. Absolutely. <laughs> Dumping things is like legit. And then that sprinkle effect of that exact six grams extra, thanks to the British Baking Show. So four, four standard Charlie feet was like no problem. And then five is just five really is, erratic. Uh, proving to be a challenge. That's cool, that's good information. So, and again, in the gym, we've taught you to measure things with your own feet because you take your feet everywhere when you don't have a tape measure, unless you're Charlie and you can just like see that it's 23 feet and be correct. <laughs> I'm really bad at that. <laughs> you're welcome, Kelsey. <laughs> Maybe I'm just out of practice. <laughs> I think it's just also that you get neurologically fatigued. And and out of practice. And we're not perfect. I'm definitely out of practice. Oh, man. All of these things are true. I want to play. This is pretty far for me. Does it ruin it that I make you step off? No. 
Not far, but it's like a little far. Okay. Oh, that's terrible. That was loud. Sorry, y'all. Try again. Try not to be loud. Cool. Balance. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was really nice. Good job. Oh. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, he's not gonna fall. It's gonna be forever. Not necessarily. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Yay. I mean, not yay. <laughs> Good try. Good try. Oh, that was poopy. I shoved my knees forward to catch it. Uh, Kelsey mm -hmm. says, yay, British baking show. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that was poopy. It's been a while, y'all. See, I'm doing that thing where I'm cheating, standing up for the balance. Okay, ready? Standards. Nope. I, mean, I had standards. Yeah. <laughs> standards. All right. So as we have jumped ourselves into oblivion, let's go ahead. Whatever, whatever we happen to be using, let's cool ourselves down a little bit. Instead of dynamically trying to control ourselves, let's just reestablish that control. Well, if you want to use that bar, yeah, go I'll, for I'll it. turn it so that it's a different pull. I think I know what you're doing. So we're gonna grab, and then what we're gonna think about is trying to relax our upper body and just have all of this control go through our feet. And what this drill is helping us do is build a little bit of strength through those arches but also build that wonderful tactile feedback of learning how to use your toes as that first line of strategy to balance and control your center of gravity oh. rather than using the rest of your body. <laughs> Looking want... up made it hard. <laughs> <laughs> and well, so the other thing that you can do once you've established that control, you can kind of oh. test and see whether or not you've actually taken away your eyesight because you can remove your frame of reference. In this case, if I'm looking at the U-bolt on Nicole's bar, I can then shift and look at the slant. And nothing, nothing really should change. Oof. You can look at Nicole. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and a moving reference point can sometimes be significantly more challenging. But that gets my arches like crazy. Yeah, feels good though. Calves. And we're gonna do a qu some, I'm gonna do stretching at the end to cool. cool down. Um, another thing that we can think about doing while, while trying not to bend our knees too much, what we're gonna try to do, you can use your arms. We're gonna keep ourselves balanced, but I want you to think about driving up through your ankles, putting, pointing down through your toes. But then I want you to try to balance as you drop your heels nice and low. On these bars, I can just about tap my heels to the floor before pressing up again. These are calf raises but they're helping us load, Burning. balance, and stretch at the same time as we make that connection to the floor and then we press ourselves up and through. Uh, Joel wants to know, is there a way you can think factor without putting rickety stool Yeah, <laughs> put, put some Legos underneath you. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Charlie's joking, don't do that. Because he will. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, being able, I mean, I don't know for you if it would be like a strength privilege after, so set a goal where you have to get three, you could do three in a row, so you have to have three good. So when I was going back and forth, I didn't get anywhere close, because at one point I would have to catch it with balance or whatever, so you have to get three in a row in order to progress to another standard foot length farther away. But then also you could have a rule that if it takes you X number of tries to get it, then you need to do a strength privilege because it's all a lot of lower body. So maybe you could push-ups or some holds. 
Um, if you have the privilege of an overhead bar, you can do chin-ups, pull-ups, hanging, things like that. Is that kind of what you mean? I think he wants to make it, let me read it again. Yeah, increasing the mental factor. <clears throat> Kelsey says, are you joking though? <laughs> um, increasing mental factor without making a stupid. Sure. You wanna switch to stretching? No, he's asking you. He's asking you how can we make what we just led them through uh, increasing the mental factor without, because because what he's saying is like he wants the height training. Gotcha. Um, so what uh, something that I've done in the past, I'm gonna steal, steal your bar. bar. I've set up a scenario where a a drop is unlikely to happen. As in, if I'm here and I'm saying I'm trying to find a distance where I can almost always. Make that jump. Okay, cool. One, cool. Two, and I'm going around. Three, not bad. A little bit of balance, cool. And I continue to go and make those jumps. If I've created a situation where, let's say, I should be able to do this 10 out of 10 times, say, cool. I'm going to do this again. Yeah. From start to finish, I'm going to do 10 in a row. And then you create, as Nicole suggested, strength privileges or any other privilege of going without chocolate that night? I don't know. <laughs> chocolate is delicious. Just I know chocolate. Different. Chocolate is delicious. Uh, chocolate. But if you if you set yourself up and then on that night or on that tenth jump you fail, gone. Stick yourself like hold yourself to whatever. I don't want to call it a bet. Whatever challenge you gave yourself. So that increases your mental factor without it needing to be the fear of. Yeah. Height training. Okay, yeah. we're gonna stretch. Uh, we just abused our calves a lot, so Charlie can stretch there so they can see a different view. Yay. Cool. We're gonna stretch our calves. Um, if you have something you can put your foot against, don't do drywall. So go find like a, what is it called? The stuff. The stuff that is the trim. Trim. Go find trim in your door frame so that you can put your foot up. If you're also barefoot, I don't like putting my heel and doing this foot directly on the ground so I would put a pillow but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our toes up on the wall we're gonna have our legs stay straight and we're gonna lean forward and try and get our hip to touch the wall it won't get there this is gonna stretch more of the top of our calf Charlie abandoned you don't get to see a different angle I think he's gonna zoom in is that what you did oh yeah oh yeah So our leg is staying straight, and I'm currently stretching the foot that is interacting with the wall, not this back leg. It all says, or you know, a door. Or a door. I think in relation to my trim, trim comment. I have old doors. I guess you do too. I wouldn't want to do it on our door. I, would we, I don't know, I'd be worried about it. I would want to do the trim. The door jam, the door jam, that's what it's called. So we're gonna back out a little bit. For me, I've got fairly flexible ankles, so I'm gonna shove my foot up more. Charlie's gonna do something different. He's actually gonna put his foot flat on the ground and put his toes up because he's crazy and his ankle is different than my ankle. I have this dumb does ankles. nothing for me and I can touch my knee to the wall. So so technically I can too. It, this really only works on the, on the uh, slanted walls. Oh, so you'd have to elevate your ball foot a tiny bit? Yeah. That's okay. So you find, pick your poison, but what you want is that you want to bend the knee and send it to the wall, but it won't get there. This is gonna send the stretch more down towards your Achilles and your soleus, the lower part of your calf. So before we were stretching gastroc and this is soleus. We're being gentle, it's really easy to overdo it. I don't wanna pull anything. You're being gentle. I'm being gentle, I'm mobile. And then we're gonna back out. We're gonna, gonna switch sides. Force my calves so into my submission. My heel's gonna go up, and I'm gonna send my hip towards the wall with that true straight leg. If anything, I I don't feel like I feel the need to lock out my knee because I have hyperextension. Do you feel like you're locking out your knee? I'm totally locking out my knee. Okay, so for me, straight leg is not actually straight leg. That's straight leg. So I don't do that here. Weird. Yeah. 
Arguably, maybe I should to get full range of motion, but calves are tight right now, so say lovey. This is where I'm at. Uh, hip to the wall, but it won't get there. We can't see chat. Missed you. You're talking to us. We love you. <laughs> and then you're gonna back out. You're gonna send your knee to the wall. It won't get there. Again, adjust your foot either higher or lower for whatever you need to feel that in your body. But you want more towards bottom of your heel into your Achilles and soleus, bottom part of your calf. Awesome. We're gonna do a standing runner's knee. So you can brace on the wall and not make this about balance, but single leg is standing straight and we're gonna grab, ideally grab at our ankle, not at our toe or our foot. That takes away the entire joint. If you can't do this and you need to grab more towards your toes, that's fine. But we're gonna grab here and we're gonna think about sending that knee down and back. What we wanna think about making sure to have happen is to open up this hip joint and not allow that knee to come forward or to be bending forward to close that hip joint. Our hips are static and flat. Sending that knee down to the ground without dropping the hip. Bring it in line with your other knee. Can you see well enough to know? There's not. Okay. Got eagle eyes, y'all. <laughs> We're gonna switch sides. Around. We're gonna grab ankle. Stretch our quad. Great standing leg. Opening up that hip. From here, I really feel like I get a good side stretch because I'm tight right now. If I open and lean towards the wall, obey and create this nice open chain, I feel like it just feels nice up my side. So feel free to play around. Once you've spent a little bit of time in that like neutral, quote unquote, explore. There's no right or wrong. Not getting twin or pinchy. Ah, feels good. Awesome. We're gonna do toes. Grabbed a lot. Um, if you want to take off your shoes, you can. But I. I honestly just like to bend my toes because I got freaky toes. Charlie has less mobile toes. He can do that with his um, shoes on. So for me, if I go down onto my knees, this is not enough. I can either push my feet back more. Holy cow, that's freaky. I know, I'm sorry. But then it sends it Are up. you sorry? Uh, well, I'm not sorry. I'm not. Uh, oh. Then it sends it up my arch a little bit, which feels nice. And I'm also so mobile that I kind of need to roll through my toes, but do this slowly and gently, but we're gonna stretch those toes back. I'm using my hands to push down a little bit on my heels because I feel like I need a little bit of weight or downward pressure in order to actually get there. I feel like I can't actually sit back enough to, to get this. So if I take my hands and just cup over my heel, I can push down in the, the exact right way to really get this stretch sensation. That would freak me out so badly. <laughs> it would hurt, I think. Different strokes. When you're done, you're gonna roll out of that. So now from here, you can either, I'm gonna get a little farther away from you. Um, you can roll through the front feels really good for me as well. So I'll just brace to the side, but this is a very comfortable position for me to be squatted in and not everybody will feel that way. So we can also just do this manually. We can take our foot, we can just pull through, press. What we want is to feel that full stretch through the front of our foot. You can also do this standing. And again, to get my pinky, I kind of have to pronate, supinate stuck in at words today, my bad. Roll through that big toe. You wanna get top of your uh, foot. Feel that stretch all the way down through. Do the other side. How I, yeah, I did the other side. Double checking. <laughs> but now's the time for any last minute questions that you have. 
about jumps, landings, squat position, isometric holds. What else do we cover? Balance oriented jumping landings versus precision jumping landing. Oh, we got Bonnie in uh, Facebook chat. Yay, Bonnie. Try too late. I hope you're still here. Woohoo. Never get any chatter in Facebook chat. They're awesome. Move that around. That could be a lot on your arch. Awesome. Anything else that you would like to stretch, be feeling free to do that at your own, in your own home, or continue practicing your jumps and doing awesome things. We miss you. We're going to be streaming on my I Walk Forward. Is that too good? I'm still in frame. Okay. I didn't know how much he zoomed. Uh, we're going to be streaming on Sunday at 2 o'clock, and it's going to be a strength class. So we'll set up circuit and provide modifications, demo, maybe do like a set through with you, and then we'll be out Audi. So it won't be a full hour, and then you'll see you on Sunday, hopefully. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll monitor chat after, and I'll get up the placards in the live stream for Sunday's strength circuit. But good job practicing balance and landings and jumping and all the good stuff and we miss you lots and we'll see you soon. Bye.